In a previous episode, I've mentioned that our ship loaded a cargo of bauxite from Kamsar in Guinea, West Africa, and then delivered it safely to the discharging port. What I didn't mention was that the discharging port was in Germany. To get there, our ship had to travel northward through the Atlantic Ocean and pass through the English Channel and enter the North Sea. But before we did, we needed to change over our fuel from this black stuff into this. Ships are required to comply with a lot of regulations, and among them are the ones that are being enforced in the MARPO Convention, the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships. MARPO has six annexes, which cover different types of pollution, such as those caused by oil, chemicals, garbage, sewage. But for now, our main concern is Annex 6 of MARPO, which addresses air pollution from ships. Annex 6 of MARPOL requires ships to comply with emission limits either by consuming low sulfur fuel or using an exhaust gas scrubber. The global sulfur content limit for ships' fuels is less than 0.5%. However, the North Sea is designated by MARPOL as a SECA or Sulfur Emission Control Area, which enforces stricter controls when it comes to emissions from ships. In this case, ships can only use fuels with a sulfur content of less than 0.1%. Since our ship is not fitted with an exhaust gas scrubber, our only option is to change our fuel from VLSFO, or very low sulfur fuel oil, to LSMGO, or low sulfur marine gas oil. And it's not really as simple as just flipping a switch or opening and closing a few valves. Changing over of fuel types requires a bit of planning. First, you have to confirm that your stock of LSMGO is not contaminated. You can verify this by simply draining a little bit from the service tank. You'd think it's naturally going to be clean because the pipelines, pumps, and tanks are isolated, but I've been on board ships where I've seen it happen, so it wouldn't hurt to check, just to be sure. Next you have to compute the changeover duration. The regulation requires that once the ship passes through the line, it should already be consuming fuel with less than 0.1% sulfur content. That means the changeover procedure has to be done earlier. Because once you open and close the necessary valves and start taking fuel from the LSM Geo tank, the changeover is not going to happen instantly. Because the remaining heavy fuel inside the pipes of the engine's fuel system Will continue to circulate and mix with the LSMGO. So technically, the engine will still be burning mixed fuel at this point. It would take a few hours for the fuel to thin out and eventually only LSMGO will remain in the system. Now that would depend on the engine's rate of consumption and the total fuel content within the pipes. To determine the changeover duration, we use a simple calculator made by Lloyd's. We merely input the values and it will show us how much time it will take to complete the changeover. In our case, it was around 4 hours. That means we have to start the changeover process at least 4 hours before our ship crosses the line. Of course, you have to make a little wiggle room to allow for surprises, just in case. Now, using this information, you have to coordinate with the bridge so they will notify the engine room with the estimated time of crossing. Best case scenario would be to complete the process about half an hour before crossing. So in these cases, timing is really very important. Now some of you might ask, why don't we just carry out the changeover procedure earlier, like a day before or 12 hours before? Well, LSMGO is more expensive than the heavier fuels. So if we do that, it's just poor management. Before we begin with the operation, we need to start another generator, which will already be running on LSMGO. The generator that was previously in service will also be changed over, but unlike the main engine, the generators can switch fuels much faster 
as they have a separate dedicated line for light fuels. VLSFO has a high viscosity, commonly at 180 or 380 centistokes at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. It has to be stored at around 40 degrees in order for the transfer pumps to be able to get suction, and once it gets purified, it's kept in the fuel oil service tank at a temperature of around 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. Now let's say we're using the 380 CSD variant. In order for it to be injected into the main engine, it needs to be heated up to usually around 135 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, the viscosity goes down to around 12 to 13 centistokes, enough for it to be atomized when injected into the engine. LSMGO, on the other hand, is a light fuel and already has a low viscosity at room temperature, so it doesn't need additional heating. This means that changing over from VLSFO to LSMGO is essentially changing over from a hot fuel to a cold fuel. And if you do that too fast, there's going to be a high risk of thermal shock. Which is why before the actual changeover, the fuel heater should be bypassed and the steam supply to the heater and the tracing lines should be shut. It would take a few minutes, but eventually the fuel in the system will start cooling down, which of course will also cause the viscosity to go up. Eventually, the fuel temperature will drop to around 95 degrees Celsius, which is the same temperature in the fuel oil service tank. This means there's no more additional heating within the fuel circulating system, and it is now safe to introduce the LSMGO into the system. With the VLSFO line shut off and the pumps now taking suction from the LSMGO tank, the remaining heavy fuel in the line will get diluted with LSMGO, cooling it down further but also decreasing the viscosity. Our main engine is electronically controlled, so an additional step for us is to input the new fuel parameters. This will allow the engine to adjust its performance accordingly. So we have already changed over the fuel lines to LSMGO. Now all we have to do is wait for it to completely flush the remaining heavy fuel oil in the line and circulate pure LSMGO. Now, as mentioned earlier, the calculated changeover duration was four hours. So during that time, we had to monitor the engine parameters and see if any drastic changes occur. We have to especially be careful of the fuel temperature and make sure it continuously goes down while the viscosity should not go lower than 2 centistokes. As ships generally don't have testing equipment to determine sulfur content, an easy way to judge if the changeover is complete is by simply comparing a fuel sample taken from the main engine fuel sampling line to a sample taken directly from the LSMGO service tank. Okay, so it's been almost four hours. Let's check uh, the sampling line from the main engine. Let's compare the sample that we took from uh, fresh sample from the DO service tank. Judging from the quality of the samples, we could say that 
our changeover is already complete and I think we have about 20 minutes more before our ship crosses into the Seca boundary. When our ship reached our discharging port in Germany, a Marpol inspector came on board and took a fuel sample from our system to have it analyzed. I was very confident that there would be no issues since I saw the actual fuel sample from our system and knew for a fact that it was as clean as the fresh LSMGO from the tank. As it turned out, I was right. 